before I came to the United States, I did a small search on TND too. And I was trying to find the location of this university. First of all, I tried the Nanjiazhou Dashu. I think this is the commonly used term, but somehow I couldn't find it. I, it's located somewhere in Los Angeles, but this went black. And so I had a second try. I used a different keyword, Nanjia Dash, and this time I was able to locate it. Well, this kind of thing is quite, quite disturbing for internet users if you have to try different keywords before you can locate that place. And it's not just happening in, in the Chinese version. If you think about Google, uh, for instance, in Germany, there is a place called Köln, and in English, we call it Cologne. So if you type in different uh, you know, English translations, will you be able to locate that place immediately? And this is a technical part that I will uh, delve into later on in my presentation. But let me begin um, from the very beginning. I will talk about map pro uh, China's script over map production and how China historically has tried to uh, control the dissemination of geographic information in paper formats. And also with the advent of the, the, um, the internet, how China continued to uh, extend these kind of measures to control online mapping service. And then I will talk about the technical part of TND tool and how this implies, does, it, does, it, it, does this TND tool empower the Chinese citizens or the other way around? If it empowers, in what way? I hope, I, I hope I will be able to delve into that and I'll make a quick comment. Well, first of all, from uh, Chinese, uh, traditional paper maps, there are two different ways that the Chinese government has been, uh, been uh, executing to control map production. First is to monopolize uh, cartographic publications. So before 1954, uh, there was no regulation at all regarding how people want to draw the maps of the world of, of their own country. But uh, since 1954, the Chinese government has regulated that the 16 map publishing companies in the entire country to merge into one company, which is called Sino Map. And this company has been, uh, has been uh, dominating the entire map uh, drawing industry in China since then, and which makes the, all the maps produced in China has a very standardized version. And as you, as I, I guess you all know about the issue of uh, Tibet, Taiwan, and Xinjiang. So of course, according to the Chinese definition, these territories has to be exactly belonging to, to the People's Republic of China. This is just one example. And this monopolization goes hand in hand with map screening. So there are regulations from this SBSM uh, regarding how maps uh, should, be, should be drawn. And every time, if, if, this, if anyone wants to publish maps, uh, they have to go through this uh, screening. For instance, for cartographers or geographers, for them, it's very important. If you think about cartographers in our society, it's very important that we present very accurate and very clear information on our maps. But for the Chinese maps, there, there are regulations trying to minimize the accuracy of information presented on map. Because for the Chinese regime, to release geographic information, it's like releasing a state secret. And so there is, there is really a lot of regulations trying to make sure that the maps cannot be as precise as we expect in, such as in America. Or another example is like the territory of Xinjiang or Tibet. Uh, as we know, these two controversial areas, they, their territories have been changing during the past 2,000 years. But the Chinese regulation says that um, you have to present the territory of Xinjiang and Tibet always as it is as how it looks like now, although the territory has been changing during the past 2,000 years. Okay, this is just a, these are just two examples. And with the advent of the internet, the Chinese government has tried to carry on these two affirmation procedures to control online mapping, uh, online geographic information. So now we, go, uh, we look at the monopolization again. Five months before TNT2 was issued, the Chinese government says, well, we need to have uh, all the online mapping service in the country, either it's provided by a foreign a company or a Chinese company. They have to apply for a license and all the map service has to remain in China. And as you all know, uh, there, there was a, a, a big problem between Google and, uh, uh, and the Chinese regime uh, around 2009. So Google eventually had to uh, move to Hong Kong, the server has to move to Hong Kong. 
And after that, after after this license issue, the Chinese government tried to try to. If you look at a lot of governmental documents, they try to create this discourse that Tianti Tu will become the most authoritative, the, the most legitimate uh, source where Chinese citizens can get the, the geographic information. So this is the monopolization, and. This also goes hand in hand with uh, the map, uh, web map screening. And that's where TNT2 comes from. According to the SPSM rule, that all the maps have to be created, all the maps online have to create it like the maps created um, online uh, on the website of the SPSM. And TNT2 exactly uh, serve this function because TNT2 is an online mapping service. So whatever, if you if you are an online mapping service company, if you want to provide anything as such, then you have to follow the format that has been presented on TNT. And this is just one example where my colleagues, they are geographic uh, information experts. I'm not. I'm learning from them. And they have created this overlapped map for me, which compares the boundaries, the uh, Chinese boundaries uh, near India and Bhutan interpreted by TNT2 and Google. And you can see the dashed lines are interpreted by TNT2 while the solid lines are interpreted by Google. And for instance, for the Chinese government, this area is supposed to be the, for, uh, supposed to be the Chinese territory, while India claims that this is the Indian territory. So if you really do this over, over, over map service, overlap service, you will, you will see a lot of uh, discrepancies between Google's interpretation and uh, TNT2's interpretation. And we also conducted some uh, expert surveys among GIS experts uh, how, so regarding the functions of uh, TNT2 and Google. So G means uh, Google fares much better, and T means uh, TNT2 fares much better. Since I don't have a lot of time, I just give you some uh, examples. For instance, the, the accuracy of the geographic information of China in regarding this aspect, TNT2 fares much better, of course, because this is created by the Chinese government. But outside China, as we can see from the previous example, when I tried to spot, you know, locate the USC, I couldn't find it. So outside China, uh, Google fares much better. And this is another example. In 2010, um, the Taipei County in Taiwan, it was upgraded to become the new Taipei city. But when you when you search on TNT2, it's very confusing because here it says New Taipei City, which is the new new term for this area. While when you look at the map, it still has this very old map of Taipei County. It's very confusing for users, which is the correct term that we use now. And well, and regarding this uh, technical thing, we can we can conceptualize the, the entire story maybe on this uh, map use queue. If you consider traditional paper maps, it would be A. And a GIS system that you can use on your computer, it would be B. A GIS system will reveal a lot of unknowns, so variables of different geographic information, and allow us to explore the special relationship between different variables. While on a paper map, all the information are static. You are not allowed to explore unknowns. So you only present norms. And this also comes to uh, comes in line with this interaction uh, aspect. That paper maps, there's no really interaction between the map and the users anymore. While when you have a, a, a GIS system, you will have a high high interactivity between the user and the system. And this Google um, Google is somehow located here, and then. Uh, TNT2 is here, meaning that TNT2 has certain aspects that are closer to a paper maps, that certain informations are already controlled and manipulated by the Chinese government. That there is lesser interactivity, while uh, Google has more. Hmm? And, well, to come to the conclusion, I think the TNT2 has been successful to a certain extent that it provides a very uh, interesting and new platform to, to compete with Google. And in, in light of this success, the Chinese government has tried to create more similar platforms. For instance, last year, uh, there is some kind of red map series created on, online uh, to commemorate the 90th anniversary of the, uh, of the Chinese Communist Party. So uh, Chinese citizens can, can search uh, information of their leaders online using this system. And uh, so to conclude, 
as we see that China is catching up very fast in terms of map, uh, web map web mapping service. I'm so I'm certain that they, the government is going to use it for political and social ends. So while in, in modern in, in countries like in the United States, online mapping service can empower citizens. In China, it seems that the state is gaining more power. And this wraps up my uh, presentation. Thank you very much.